Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Intuit Developer Friday Morning Hangout. It's April 21st, 2017. I'm your host, David Leary. I'm the Intuit Small Business Ecosystem Evangelist. You can follow me on Twitter, at David Leary. Today, we have a special guest, Alex Barnett. He is the director of the Intuit Developer Group. Uh, this is going to kind of be like an Ask Alex Anything uh, hour. I have some questions ready to go. Um, once we kind of plow through some of those questions, we'll open up the floor to questions from any of you that are participating. Please use the Q&A panel in uh, Zoom to ask questions. You can find the, the little Q&A icon, click that, it'll open up the Q&A panel and you can ask those questions and then I'll ask them to Alex. I would recommend if you have any tech support questions, just go to help.developer.intuit.com uh, or come next week when we do open office hours. Uh, today it's really going to be really getting to know Alex, high level questions, but nothing specific about your code or um, an issue you might be having that's more like a tech support ticket. Uh, with that said, I'll give everybody a couple more minutes to jump in and I'm just going to cover some uh, general announcements. And then after that, we'll uh, jump in with Alex. Uh, just to make sure go to the next slide and so the first thing i want to make sure everybody knows about is we again are doing the small business app showdown if you go to smallbizappshowdown.com you can submit your app you need to submit your app by august 15th um, to be in the contest and what we're doing again we're taking the top 10 finalists we're taking them to quickbooks connect in san jose you get a, a booth on the show floor you get exposed to about five thousand. uh small businesses, accountants, and other developers, and our entire community really shows up to that event. And the winner, and then you get to pitch in front of judges, and the winner gets $100,000. Um, the other thing we're doing is we've added on kind of a little mini bonus carrot along the way. So every, every 15th of the month, we're selecting an app that published in the last 30 days, and we're, folk, we're putting them as a featured app on apps.com. So don't wait till August 15th to, to join the contest. There's motivation for you to join it early and get a little bit of that benefit and pre-exposure from joining it. So that's going to be smallbizappshowdown.com. A couple other things to, to let you know about. We have QuickBooks Connect on the road. So we did QuickBooks Connect in the UK about five weeks ago. We are now going to be in Australia um, on the 18th of May, 2017. So those of you that are uh, in the AU region, please, please, please think about attending this event. There'll be some stuff for developers, but a lot of the contents, I mean, developers are small businesses, so they're gonna just gain from a lot of benefit from that. Plus, I think in general, as a developer, if you're just socializing with accountants, it just makes you a stronger developer and gets your app awareness out there. Um, and then the last one is still a little bit further down the road. But we have QuickBooks Connect, the main event in uh, San Jose, and that's going to be November 15th and 17th. So start thinking about signing up for that. And along with this, we'll do, probably do a developer hackathon. It's a much bigger event. We'll have a developer track, we'll have small business tracks, accountant tracks. Um, it, it is a much, much, much bigger event. And start thinking about getting that penciled on your calendars as well. And as always, you can find all the future hangouts and other events the developer team's doing at the developer.intuit.com slash hub slash events. And you can hit that to uh, stay in tune for any of these uh, other hangouts we have in the future. And without further ado, I'm going to stop my sharing, flip over to my camera. And Alex, make sure just to test that you're, you're, you don't see muted. I can see your face perfectly. Um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Alex. And uh, Alex, could you actually introduce yourself a little bit to the community? Uh, yeah, um, my name is Alex Barnett. I'm a director of uh, Intuit Developer Group. Um, I, uh, I joined, I should say rejoined uh, Intuit uh, about three months ago. So it's nearly the, the end of my first 90 days uh, back at Intuit. I'm very excited to be back and um, working with developers and the Intuit developer group. That's great. That's great. That's great. It's, 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 it's interesting to have you back. Um, what, what are some of the things where we kind of jump into, like, you know, now that you're back, things you're doing to Intuit, like, what do you like to do outside of Intuit? Like, who's Alex? So I, uh, I love spending time with my family. I've got between three and five children, depending on uh, how you count it. Um, uh, and so I, I live um, in Menlo Park uh, with three uh, of my kids and uh, uh, my beautiful wife. And um, when I'm not uh, spending time with the family, I'm, um, you know, making cocktails and drinking them, which I uh, enjoy very much. I love cooking and eating good food. Um, I love music, uh, both listening to music and uh, creating music. And um, then I just follow a few sports here and there and that kind of thing. 
Yeah, I think for a while I remember you used to really uh, on Twitter and Facebook, you were always like, on Fridays there'd be a piece of meat and, and a martini. Like every Friday there'd be some picture of meat and martinis. Maybe yeah. you should get back in the swing of that again. You know? Yeah, <laughs> barbecued yeah. meat, barbecued big ribeyes. I love those. Yeah, yeah that's great. That's great. So um, before you got to Intuit, even the first time you got to Intuit, like what about your career? Like have you always been developer focused? Have you what, what have you kind of done, obviously, to get here? So um, – I left school when I was uh, 17. Uh, I got offered a contract to play cricket uh, professionally, which was um, one of my passions as a kid. Um, and I kind of retired at the tender age of 24. Um, and the internet um, just happened. Like the World Wide Web was just uh, kicking off in the commercial world, wide web and I was kind of broke. Uh, so I borrowed uh, 3,000 pounds to buy myself a Mac, an internet connection, and learned myself, taught myself how to uh, develop websites um, and actually code and manage a website. And, and that's what I did. And so I joined a company that did that. And I, I basically have been involved in the internet um, and technology ever since. Uh, my um, When I was at Microsoft, I was um, really focused in on um, developers. I, I found myself drawn to developers as an audience, as a customer type. <clears throat> While I was at Microsoft, I um, basically ran the international uh, part of a Microsoft Developer Network, um, you know, globalizing that um, and localizing that uh, for the local markets and learned a lot at that time around um, you know, what developers need to be successful on Microsoft's platform. I then moved into a product team, SQL Server, uh, and ran the data programmability um, kind of developer relations uh, piece um, there. And it was all about, you know, engaging with developers, understanding how they're using um, SQL Server as a, as a programmable data store, um, understanding about how they were using .NET, um, and some older uh, technologies and working closely with the product team to be able to keep listening to what developers were looking to do and how our uh, products were, were meeting the needs of our developers and also uh, sharing all the innovation that we were doing on, on that side of things. And so that was that journey at, at Microsoft was when I really started to get uh, realizing that developers as a as a customer and a develop and, and a customer type was something I was incredibly passionate about. I learned to program when I was a kid, um, basic on a ZX81, and you know, kind of. A, I wouldn't say that I ever dreamt of being a software engineer, but I was always fascinated by what software could could be and what it can do. It was how it's going to transform our lives, and I think uh, developers. Um, I think of as, as magicians, right? Just the ability, of what they can do and how they change the world is just amazing to me. And I followed that, that career path. So from leaving Microsoft, I joined a startup called um, Bungie Labs um, that was doing a, a category defining um, set of innovations that we now call platform as a service. In fact, we were one of the first actually doing that where the entire IDE was browser based. You could code, it's like Visual Studio um, on a browser, all the coding happened in a browser, you saved your code in the cloud, you were never downloading uh, anything. And then, you know, the code would run in the cloud and you'd be able to share a URL or an endpoint of, of, of the, the, uh, the application, whether it's got a web UI or just an endpoint. And that, that was just an explosion at the time of a whole bunch of innovation. Heroku came onto the market, Engine Yard came onto the market, and there was this whole new paradigm occurring. Unfortunately, that startup blew up uh, um, and learned a ton about what it takes to, to get real adoption and, and traction on a brand new kind of technology platform. That's when Intuit, um, uh, I connected with Intuit, and the first time around uh, at Intuit, I joined to run developer relations, um, and 
we rebranded and replatformed what was you know the Intuit developer network into Intuit partner platform with a whole new technology stack, a whole new marketplace, um, and a whole new fresh opportunity to be able to reset and restart um, a lot of the work that had been great work that had been going on by the Intuit developer network, but about modernizing the platform. And so I went away um, for four years. I uh, joined a company called Risk Management Solutions, um, doing catastrophe modeling, um, uh, but building a platform in and around that. Again, it was about ecosystems, about developers, it was about APIs and SDKs in a very different domain. Um, did that for four years, and then uh, I'm back here with an opportunity to rejoin Intuit, as I said, three months ago. That's interesting. I, I think I remember like, you know, six years ago, six and a half years ago, there was like Alex, Chris, there was you, there was people, me, you know, we're running around like crazy people, like clouds coming, clouds coming. You got to get the SaaS. You got to get the SaaS. And like people thought we were a little crazy, but now, you know, now uh, 1.8 million small businesses are using QuickBooks online, like cloud and SaaS is here. Like there's no denying. I mean, majority of the developers now they're building stuff. They have SaaS apps, you know, but it's kind of funny to, to look back at your previous stint and like, how the struggle was real, right? We, were, it was, we knew it was coming, but not everybody was on board. You know, I think even developers were like, I'll never build a SaaS app. That's the craziest thing ever. And like to where, you know, now you're here and cloud's here. So you're back and the cloud's here as we were, you know, you were really pushing, saying it was coming before. I mean, the cloud, SaaS, and now we've got, you know, mobile has been, been a big deal for a long time now. And it just obviously is, uh, you know, Mobile first is almost the mantra in many, many companies and a whole new set and wave of technologies and new interfaces and, and ways to be able to interact with um, software and services, including conversational UI, the whole uh, opportunity that's occurring through AI and ML and a whole other set of wave of technologies. It's an incredibly exciting time, again, to be involved with the developer community that... Um, that wants to take advantage of those kind of capabilities uh, and, and, you know, uh, be at the, at the leading edge of these new tech and how we apply it uh, in new and interesting and innovative ways. Got it. Got it. So um, where, like, I know I kind of remember the whole, like, we weren't cloud and now we're kind of cloud. That's a big transition before your last stint and this stint. What else about Intuit is the same or different from when you were here before and where you're at now? Uh, What's the same and what's different? It's it's funny. It's like you know when I was asked the same question um, and how's it going. It's like when you when you join a company, you've heard that phrase, right? You can you're drinking through the fire hose because um, there's just so much that you're having to absorb about the business, about the people, who does what, how does the company operate, and all the rest of it. And I'm still drinking through a fire hose. The difference is that they like I recognize some of it and I know where to put it. And then there's a whole bunch of new water I haven't seen and trying to figure out that part. Um, what, what I would say is the same. Um, if I think about first the, uh, the Intuit developer group, the, what's definitely the same is still this amazing passion that the people on the team have for developers. That is absolutely clear. The DNA of the team, the passion and what gets them excited and the passion around developers is absolutely there. Um, and I would say that, and, and more generally, I think the culture of Intuit is still, as I remember it, um, which is, you know, deeply passionate about customers, um, and, uh, deeply passionate about, you know, innovation and what technology can do. Um, what's also the same is we've got still the same great, uh, CEO that we have, Brad Smith, who's, uh, inspirational. Um, for the whole of the business, but also his leadership, executive leadership team is also uh, amazing. Um, and it's a great place to work. Um, uh, and, you know, there's an internal mantra uh, from a kind of people standpoint, which is like, we want Intuit to be the, the place where people can do the best work of their lives. And the environment and the people and the culture and our purpose is definitely enables uh, that to happen. I think what's different um, um, is that uh, I, I would say f four, four or five years ago, 
we were tentatively moving into the global space. We declared it as something that we wanted to do. I think what's really different is in the last four years, the, the, the traction that um, Intuit and QuickBooks uh, is now getting in uh, overseas markets such as the UK, Australia, um, and, and, and other places is real, right? It's become more than just, hey, let's declare this as a priority. Um, now, you know, huge growth and huge opportunity that we've really started to internalize and understand what it what it takes to be able to take uh, into it into it with a global footprint. Global footprint. Yeah. Um, mobile, I think, is is also the thing that has changed quite a bit. Like I said, the mobile first. Um, a lot of our products and innovations, the new stuff that Intuit is doing really is mobile first. Not to say that we don't have web um, components of, of that product or that service, but uh, there's a lot of innovation, a lot of emphasis and understanding around what it takes to be successful with our own products uh, in the mobile world. Um, and we have also, just on the leadership team, we have a new leader, um, Susan Kudazi, who's actually been with Intuit for um, many years, he was running the um, the TurboTax uh, side of the business, and um, Dan Wernikoff was was the SM, the small business group leader at the time. They've done a switch actually in the last year, and having Susan just taken with a fresh pair of eyes and new, renewed energy um, is also different, but it's also awesome. It's another great leader um, that that is. Um, also very passionate uh, about developers and developer success. And that's one of the reasons that um, I felt really good about coming back to Intuit is, is that commitment, a deep commitment and understanding of the importance of developer as part of an ecosystem and, and how we're going to grow uh, the business together. Got it. So I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I guess this is kind of putting you in your spot. Intuit recently uh, changed its mission. I know like some of the accountants have heard about it. Um, I'm not sure how many developers have. And then I, I don't even know if I could say it word for word perfectly. So it might be putting a spot, but like what is Intuit's new mission? So at the Intuit level, um, you know, the company, the company has over the last, gosh, 30 years, as I understand and from, the, from what, I, what I know is that, you know, the, the mission is all about why we, why we exist, right? Why does the company exist? Why do we wake up in the morning? Um, and what's our purpose? And uh, at the Intuit level, that's changed probably three or four times over the course of the last 30 years, just kind of refined and, and tuned. The new, what, the new one that was unveiled with, with, the, with the company um, just over a month ago was uh, powering prosperity around the world. Um, and um you know at an individual level at a personal level i love that right it gives real meaning and purpose to and it's very aligned to how i think about what intuit can be doing um for all sorts of uh customers um and prosperity is more than you know just material wealth it's more than just financial wealth it's about um it's about peace of mind it's about being able to do what you love doing. It's about uh, feeling safe and secure um, and prosperity and being, being, you know, the notion that we are enabling and power and prosperity around the, around the world is very, for, for me personally, very aspirational. And I think it really, you know, helps make sure that, that everybody understands why is it that we're waking up every day across all the different parts of the businesses that we have on all the different products. You can always kind of link it up. Uh, into that um, overarching um, mission. So how, how do you see that, that new mission uh, really like affecting third-party developers and our developer community? Well, you know, if you go back our, our, on the small business side of things, the QuickBooks part of the business is really about enabling um, our small business customers uh, to be successful. And um, and our products, um, our own first party uh, products, certainly solve um, a set of problems that, that uh, we set out to, to, 
to solve for our small business customers and, and, you know, helping them grow and helping them manage their business and automate more and, and less wrangling uh, around that. But um, we can't do that alone. Um, and we can't solve every single problem for our small business customers alone. And so we look at developers as being um, a really key part of the overall strategy and how we go about solving small business uh, problems globally. Um, you think about, um, so we want you know, small businesses to prosper. Um, we want to be able to unlock the power of many developers and the solutions and the innovations and the creative process and work and partner with those developers to co-solve co right, those different problems uh, for small businesses. And in turn, uh, we want our developers to prosper. Um, and, um, uh, and to do that in a way that, you know, it's about having an app that works with QuickBooks, but then solving that particular problem really well uh, with a number of different apps that work well with QuickBooks. And so developers obviously an important part of the way that we, we solve that. And the third component that um, Intuit has and QuickBooks on the site uh, in particular with accountants as, as a third really key part of the overall ecosystem that we're building. So, you know, we think about um, what they're trying to be is truly trusted advisors for their clients. So we think about, you know, Intuit, we have small business customers, we have accountants, and we have developers. And that ecosystem um, doesn't work without developers as well. And so we need to reflect that more uh, in our platform. Like it, it's been the way that the, the business has been running, like accountants are, are key, but how do we then really enable accountants as the third side of a, of a, of a three-sided versus a two-sided platform um, uh, you know, to be able to enable our small business customers to, to prosper. Yeah, because definitely there's dependencies on all three you're talking about, right? Like we, we're starting to see data where if a small business owner works with an accountant or an advisor, they're more successful. We're starting to see data if, if the a customer uses QuickBooks and they add on an app, they stay a customer of both products longer. So probably an indication they're somewhat successful. And so you're right, you start throwing in, oh, they're adding an app, that's specialized for their business to help them run their business better. And they're working with an accountant that helps them run their business better. You know, it's that, you know, all three sides are definitely benefiting from that. The customers, the small businesses and the um, developers and the accountants. So that's interesting. Um, everybody likes to, from what I've seen, defines platform different. Like how do you define platform? Um, well, I, going back to the Microsoft days, okay. um, you know, I think what they were able to do, um, from a technology standpoint is build out what, you know, the, the canonical notion of a platform based business. Right. And so, yes, they had products like office. Yes. They had products like, um, uh, word and, and obviously the operating system, but in the operating system, what they were able to do, I'm, I'm, I'm stating the obvious here, but the reason that they were able to succeed with the operating system is they opened up the platform uh, and, and really unlocked the power of developers to be able to add increasing levels of value to the operating system. So when you were buy, buying Windows, you weren't just buying Windows, you were buying, the, in the early days, tens of apps, then hundreds of apps, then thousands, and then tens of thousands of apps that work with Windows. And so that's a notion of a two-sided platform, right? You've got the end customer uh, using Windows, you've got you know, the developers that are building applications on top of the Windows platform, and you get this network effect. Um, the value of the operating system keeps increasing for both parties. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the end users benefiting from all of the innovation around the platform. And so, um, you know, that's how I think of it. Like I, I, I worked at Microsoft, understood what the platform dynamics and what it means to build an ecosystem and, and the network effects. And so uh, when I think of 
uh, platform, I think of it in those terms, and they don't have to necessarily be two-sided, they can be multi-sided, uh, as we talked about with accountants being a multi-sided uh, third part of a platform. And um, so, so that, from a conceptual standpoint, is how I think about it, how, how I, I define that. Got it. I'm going to jump over to an audience question because I think it ties into the, you know, the role of the third party developers that you just spoke about and then some of this, like what, what your vision of platform is and that, but I have a question that came in from Chris Reagan. So and I'm just going to read it verbatim. So over the last four years, I've heard several different versions of the developer role at Intuit. What is your vision for the relationship between Intuit and developers over the next 24 months? Uh, what will be different from what we see today? So it's kind of tagging along what you've just talked about the, that three sided, you know, support system between developers, customers, but then really, where do you, where do you see that going forward? Um, <clears throat> so what, what I think is um, new, maybe new and different and, and coming back to um, m my journey after being, being away for four years and coming back is that for one thing, I think, Intuit as a whole, at the very senior leadership level, you know, they've invested in the Intuit developer network in the old days as it was in the IBP and the rest of it, um, recognizing that developers are a key part of Intuit's overall success and, and how we, we serve small business customers. Um, I think the difference now, after four years away, is that um, that understanding or that appreciation of developers has worked its way up to the most strategic level. Um, it is considered to be a key component um, of how Intuit is going to be able to grow, uh, about how it's going to be able to serve our global customers, about how we're going to be able to become the default, well, the default, the the, you know, the, 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 the applications of, and solutions of choice for small business customers around the world, but there's no way we can do that without a thriving ecosystem. And um, what that means is enabling developers to be able to build on our platform. So, so I, I suppose the, the intent is still the same. Um, what is very different is the, the, the altitude that it's arrived at in a strategic sense in terms of how it informs our strategy, about how we go to market, about how we invest. Um, and that's why I was excited to be able to come back because it's, it, it didn't feel like just doing the same role uh, as previous. It's, it's, it's now um, getting the, the attention and the investment it deserves. Um, and I think moving forward, um, you know, we're still very, very focused in on not just the technology platform uh, and the APIs and the functionality, which we, uh, we know we want to do more of, um, but it's also about how do we really start integrating those applications and services from third parties and developers and further integrate them into the product experience. Um, uh, and how do we really drive success for those developers that have chosen our ecosystem or to join our ecosystem? Uh, and so look, I, I recognize not everybody in our, in, in, in our community is building apps to sell to small businesses. There's a lot of developers that are integrating with our platform for one-off integrations with a homegrown system or uh, integrations that they never intend to go off and sell. And that's a really, also a really important part of the ecosystem that we're building, um, allowing consultants and IT and, um, and the homegrown developer and, and those to do that, but also recognizing that for those who are building apps that want to be sold to our end customers, that we have a real obligation um, to, to, uh, make those apps truly discoverable, um, surface those apps for the right businesses at the right time, so we're able to drive new customers through to those apps that have invested in our platform. And that that piece there, I think, is is um, still an opportunity that in front of us. Um, 
we have lots to do and lots of learning to do and experimentation to do to, to make that really successful. But I think that that side of the emphasis is, is something that we want to raise the game on. Because if you're not experiencing the success, right, beyond the functional capabilities of our platform, uh, if you're not getting the success of you as a developer growing your business, um, uh, then we're failing uh, as an ecosystem and a, a platform operator. Got it. So we're kind of moving away from the two-year kind of high-level views. Um, one of the questions that kind of came in from a, somebody through email this week. Um, so you're about 90 days in now, right? So what's kind of your highlight, one or two highlights of the last 90 days? And then also, like, what, what are you most excited about tackling maybe in the next 90 days? <clears throat> like, what's in the real short term here? So uh, what did I do? I, like, I think it was January 31st. January 30th that I was my first day back and uh, uh, and so one of the first things I did is I set up um, one-to-ones with every single person on the team um, to get them to know them personally um, what makes them tick you know what are their passions how do they get too into it why are they here um, and learn about them and and as well obviously a little bit about what they do uh as well so that was that was uh spent a lot of time uh doing that um spent a lot of time uh with our developers uh as well i had uh the opportunity it was it was really great uh, just a few weeks after i joined we had um, the small business uh hackathon over in london um as part of the qbc uh the quickbooks connect uh, event in london and there were 120 130 developers that uh, showed up on a Saturday morning. Uh, like, I can't remember. It was like eight o'clock, ten o'clock, something like that in the morning. You get developers showing up for that at that time of day. You're doing all right. And I got to meet a whole bunch of developers there. And so some of them had already been on our ecosystem for a while and just understanding what they're thinking and uh, what's working for them, what's not. Um, and I've also been able to get in touch with other developers outside of that. So that was, that was really exciting. Uh, uh, I was, if I can interrupt for a second, sorry. Yeah. Like, one of the highlights for me with that hackathon is Alex um, went out to the store and brought bed, butter, and Marmite. And he was slicing bread in the back and bringing out plates of butter bread with Marmite on it for everybody to taste and try to try to figure out who loves it and who hates it. But I mean, you might've walked around for two hours, just, just, it's pushing Marmite down people's throats. It was I'm kind of fun. I'm a Marmite pusher. I'm, <laughs> that's what I do. Um, yeah, because like Marmite, you know, for a lot of the locals in London, they know it. Um, yeah. But we had a lot of folks from our team and from outside the UK that had never even heard of it, let alone taste it. So I would kind of like have a camera and then like take a photo of a before and after facial expression um that was i thought very amusing and in 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 the uk marmite is known as something either you love or hate so like taking that photo of that facial expression tells you whether whether they which one they were on so that was a lot of fun yeah um uh as well as table tennis i played table tennis uh and spent time doing that um the other thing i've been spending time on is um reviewing a lot of what we call here voice of developer around what are the pain points what's working what's not what are developers uh, telling us that they wish could be improved um, and really digging uh, into that um, and reviewing and getting really familiar back uh, although the platform um, I mean it's it's Many aspects have, have stayed the same, some has changed, but really going through end-to-end -end around the developer experience right across it and really getting back and familiar with uh, the product uh, that, that we provide to developers, um, as well as uh, you know, having a look at our strategy um, and you know, identifying opportunities to be able to tweak it and our priorities around that and how we invest uh, in the right areas to be able to improve the end-to-end -end developer experience, the platform, the product itself, but also everything that goes around it, you know, support um, our marketplace and, and a whole bunch of stuff. So really kind of immersing myself in our employees, uh, in our customers in our, and our product. 
Got it. Got it. So let's jump into some a little bit more. Um, some people are starting to ask some questions and some of these questions that people are asking, I kind of have are ready to go. So we'll start getting a little bit more specifics around the APIs, the platform, um, you know, the developer stuff and the tools we're providing and things like that. So I'll start going to go through some that I had from before. Maybe I'll pop in and out of the QA panel and ask uh, one's opportunity that that match and, and align. Uh, for those of you that are, are participating, please definitely use the chat for chatting. I know uh, somebody made a comment that serving Marmite is bad and it's not nice. So use that for the chat, but questions, real genuine questions, let's put in the Q&A panel. Um, and those are questions that you want me to ask Alex, not just questions that are just kind of random. So definitely yeah. use the QA panel for questions. Like Marmite, you, you can't sit on the fence, right? Like obviously that person is in the hate camp and I get it. Like it's one of those things, you either love it or you hate it. Either love it or you hate it, got it, got it, got it. So um, is there any chance you can give us kind of like, you know, longer term roadmap specifically around QBO, the APIs, um, things like, I know these things take a while. We finally launched webhooks a couple, you know, six months ago or so, like that finally came, but like what else is kind of coming in the pipe that's, you know, that that's more tangible? Yeah, so um, let's see, let's start with the big stuff. Um, uh, QBO V3 API um, has been around for some time and we know all too well because we hear it from you developers that um, both there are gaps in the functionality um, and um, some um, let's say design quirks that make it um, not a particularly usable uh, API. It's complicated. It's the domain is complicated, um, and there's a kind of sense of necessity to really understand or or needing to understand the the domain or the the, the knowledge around accounting in order to be able to um, integrate an app um, successfully. Um, and so we're working on a V4 um, actively right now. Um, that is going to be um, looking to solve a whole bunch of problems, not only uh, the functional gaps um, that have been there for, for some time, uh, but also in terms of its uh, design and its usability and approachability, right? So if you think about the, an ideal situation is that you've got an app that does this thing that isn't necessarily about accounting, but you want to get at the data that's inside of QuickBooks or right to it. Um, like trying to, trying to get to a place where you don't, as a developer, really need to understand the intricacies of accounting in order to be able to successfully integrate with our platform and have a compelling uh, integration. Um, the, um, so that, that's, that's coming, and over the course of this year, we're going to be releasing um, betas and making that available for developers uh, to start seeing what that's about and uh, giving us feedback. Um, as part uh, of that, um, we're going to be um, including, I mentioned some functional gaps. Uh, one example would be around payroll. Um, so I know that has been uh, something for years that developers have been wanted to get at is the online payroll component of uh, the QBO uh, ecosystem and so that uh, we're going to start also um, enabling through v4 um, the other one is uh, OAuth uh, 2.0 uh, we've been on the 1.0 uh, stack for a little while so we're going to be uh, uh, doing that which I know from a usability standpoint and dealing with the complexity is going to be a better experience for developer uh, as well so that's that's important um, so those, those are the kind of like two or three uh, kind of big pieces uh, on that front. But that said, we're also looking to continue to make improvements on um, our SDKs, um, our documentation, um, our support experience, uh, the end-to-end -end publishing experience. There's a whole bunch of like stuff then in our developer portal beyond the APIs and the, the, the technology itself that we could be improving. So we're investing and we're putting together a roadmap um, for the next year uh, and make the right investments along, along that front. Got it. Um, there's a couple of questions coming in about um, 
SDKs, uh, and just uh, tools. The tools that are out there really help our, our developers to work faster. Uh, some of them are people asking about specific support for uh, specific SDKs. Some people are asking about open source. So can you kind of talk about a little bit about the tools we have or your vision of how, how we should be building out these tools or supporting these tools? Yeah. So um, uh, dealing with a raw API uh, isn't fun. And, you know, the way to be able to simplify the interaction model between the API and your application is through an SDK. And um, the SDK uh, is, I, I look at it and consider it as a, as a, pro, it needs to be a part of the way that we think about our end-to-end -end product. And so um, we have three SDKs today, .NET, Java, and uh, PHP, um, which we continue to invest in and increase the, the quality of, we get feedback about how it can be improved. And we've also recently open sourced those so that um, developers are able to actually look at the source code for one thing and, uh, and um, also contribute uh, even improvements or changes that uh, they'd like to see to be folded in uh, into the SDK itself. So philosophically, we look at SDKs as critical uh, part of the developer experience is about how you get more productivity and allows you to kind of, as a developer, focus in on the value layer rather than wrangling at, at, at a level that isn't adding any value. It's, it's, it's tangling. So that, and we want to be able to continue to um, invest in SDKs and, and libraries that, that increase that productivity for you. And, and uh, also support other third-party um, SDKs or client libraries. Uh, so on our developer portal, we, we list those and make them findable. So we have developer contributions for a language that we don't formally support through our SDK, um, enabling that uh, and discoverability and encouraging developers to, to, to build out the ecosystem of, of, of stuff, tooling, et cetera, that our developers need to be uh, productive on our platform. Got it. Got it. So, um, kind of a, a question that's uh, you know along those lines of really specific the API. So, let me ask a question that I think is a could be a short answer, but is the QuickBooks Online the web application using any of the APIs that developers are using? And if yes, if no, why? Yeah. So there's a there's a two-part answer to that. Um, the first part is no. <laughs> the first part is no. The, we don't have today, when you're dealing with V3, you're not actually dealing with the, exactly the same set of APIs that our own product teams builds QBO on. Um, and um, you know, we've got a monolithic code base um, that, that is the application that is QBO. We have uh, layers sitting on top of that. Some of those layers are private, and that's what the QBO team used to be able to build our functionality. Some of those layers are public. That's what you see through V3, but there's a, there's a translation effect going on that, that you, you know, it, they're not a one-to-one -one relationship between what the QBO app developer uh, is using and what a third party developer is. Um, uh, which is an artifact of years of history and, and priorities and all the rest of it. What's different and new and I think very exciting about V4 is that the declaration that um, the same V4 APIs are going to be the ones that run QBO and that the application team and the UI team uh, are, are consuming uh, as third-party developers, and that's a really big deal. And it's not um, it's not a PR statement or some marketing um, thing that we're going to be saying. It's really concretely real, right? That is, everybody's aligned: the, the QuickBooks team, the software architects, the engineering teams, uh, developer group, and all the rest of it. All agree that we need to do that, and. Um, we can't have 
you know, uh, we, we could just can't have, uh, apart from engineering uh, inefficiency, different sets of APIs for different folks. Do we expose all of the APIs as an internal team? No, some are going to be kept private for a whole bunch of security and other, and other reasons. But the intent is that, hey, look, if you can see it being done inside a QBO, uh, you can do the same through using our API and using the same API as the same as the engineering team on QBO. So that's uh, pretty exciting and the right approach, the right philosophy. Um, so we're really truly eating our own dog food. And so uh, if there are things that we find or improvements we could make onto the API that the QBO team, for example, have found and discovered, you know, the, the external developer community benefits from that and vice versa. Yeah, and I think it definitely eliminates this cycle that we really get stuck in, which is somebody touches QBO, they change QBO, we don't know about it, it breaks an API, developers suffer this cycle, then, then we gotta go back, hey, fix this so that it doesn't break the API, we're just an API. It's always this chase, and it really, it completely eliminates that, and it's so pro proactive for everybody involved. It's really, really exciting that the thoughts are on the before. Yeah, I agree, I agree. And so that was one of the, one of the things that, um, I discussed with um, the leadership team when I was coming over to Intuit. It's like, how serious are they around the developer? Because you know, without that common API that both internal and external teams are using, that's a really strong indication around how serious are we around the external developer community. So that, that I agree, is very exciting. Got it. So just a time check here. We have about 12 minutes left. Um, for I know this, there's about 28 of you watching. Please open up the Q&A panel. I think for maybe the next 12 minutes, let's just hammer out questions from people. Is that going to work for you, Alex? And then yeah, give you absolutely. a couple minutes yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, here's an interesting one. Um, Cliff Mitchell, he asked, uh, what about the current plan and timeline for opening up the APIs that are building inside of QBO? I know at QuickBooks Connect, we showed some demos of an integration inside of QuickBooks Online. Mm -hmm. Is there a timeline for that, for opening that up? Yeah, that's a great question. I can't give you an exact time frame um, on that. Um, uh, but I can tell you that we, as we've been reviewing the strategy and we've been looking at the planning for the next 12 to 18 months, um, certainly being able to effectively enable uh, and widgetizing um, uh, that um, and the ability to be able to provide the UI hooks from your application into the workflows inside of QBO um, is what we want to be able to do for the broad developer community. What I can share with you is that as a step to that journey, we've been working with a close set of um, a very small number of uh, partners, strategic partners, um, pioneering um, the work around that um uh I, example would be google who we've we've talked we've we've done a couple of blog posts about or whatever and then uh, you can find out more about it or whatever but that is an example of how we're taking functionality from google calendar and incorporating it into the qbo experience inside of the U, ui um as one example and we've got a few others that we're working on and the idea is that as we do those initial set of implementations, um, we start identifying UI patterns and user flow patterns and technology patterns uh, that then we can commoditize, if you like, or productize, and then make available to the broader external developer community. Um, and so there's a there's a there's a you know there's a sequence that we're running through in order to do that. Uh, we're making really good progress, but the intent is yes, we want to be able to enable the UI to become a surface um, that third party apps um, kind of uh, are, are displayed and enabled to be interacted with inside of the QBO workflow, which is very cool uh, stuff. Got it. Um, it's a good, uh, good question. It's probably a very uh, interesting, quick answer. Um, the APIs right now are very QBO focused. Uh, have you considered APIs for TurboTax or ProConnect? Um, there's a huge opportunity to enhance the functionality of these products from the developer community. I agree there's a huge opportunity. Um, uh, what you will, uh, we announced 
say this is before I joined, but um, uh, I think TurboTax and that team are, are starting to go through that journey of, of understanding what it means to be able to um, open up that product through uh, an API set. Um, so right now, um, like there's a very, very early uh, uh, expert level of experimentation that's going on that front that, that was publicly uh, announced a few, a few months ago. Um, but to be realistic, it's going to be some time before we get to the point of being able to, you know, provide the same kind of uh, open APIs for that product or, or the ProConnect product uh, that was described. Um, but um, in the, you know, the intention, the strategy is that we want to be able to run basically the QBO uh, uh, open platform playbook across uh, our products and across, um, across the business. Yeah, and I think like we talked about before, like as we, you know, the Dan Workoff used to lead this QuickBooks group, has switched over to TurboTax, there's that flop. So that mindset, like he's seen developers, he's seen what could happen when you open up their APIs and we've seen the growth. So I think that that mindset's now per, uh, percolating throughout the entire company. So people are starting to think about this with other products. So it is, yeah, even though it might not be the tomorrow, but I think it's a vision and there's an agreement that it makes sense eventually how it how how it implements is different but i think everybody's in agreement it's probably yeah, a good and, idea and, you know, the, the the reality is that the transformation that we've been seeing at a large level outside of intuit um is that um platforms win over products um uh in in the broader sense you can have a point solution and it's fantastic but if it can't integrate with another product that's a problem. And if you're not building an ecosystem and a platform around that business, um, you're limiting your opportunity and you'll probably get beaten by a business that does uh, provide the platform and the ecosystem as well as the underlining product uh, experience uh, as well. Okay. I'm going to actually jump to one that I think I had before. Um, what are some of your favorite developer platforms? It's just kind of triggered it. You know, when you're talking about how, you know, somebody who doesn't have a good platform might get beat in market right so like what, what are some of your favorite platforms you've you've seen or looked at uh well I, I like different ones for different reasons so for example um i love stripe stripe has been the gold standard uh in terms of providing a really simple developer experience and um abstracting away the complexity and the effort um, that's required in order to be able to integrate payments um, into an, into either a website or into an application or a service. And they are, you know, fantastic developer focus. They understand that the developer experience matters massively. And I love what they do and have set the standard around being able to do that. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, I think about Azure. Um, I have some bias cause I, I like Microsoft. Um, uh, about you know what they do, but what they've been doing with Azure for the last few years is a true developer platform, and I think it's a healthy uh, competition that's going on between Azure and Amazon Web Services, who I also think is amazing what they what they do and the platform that they're opening up. And Slack as a platform uh, is another really interesting example of hey, look, you know, yes, it's a point solution initially for messaging. Um, and collaboration, but the integrations that are going on now around Slack uh, are brilliant and really interesting use cases. And so I, I think they're another really great example of like, they are, they are winning that market and accelerating that market through the ecosystem and the ability to be able to integrate their experiences outside of Slack. Got it. So I think we maybe have time for uh, two more, uh, maybe three. What is the vision for apps.com becoming a better search and find solution? For example, there's categories issues, like somebody can be a tax tool next door to manufacturing inventory next to a restaurant point of sale. And it's just, it's messy, right? Um, and they ca how, how can apps.com move towards, you know, something to help people search better? Um, well, first, let me agree that there's lots of room for opportunity and opportunity for improvement on that dimension of apps.com. Um, 
it it hasn't changed very much in terms of the of the categorization, the findability, and the search functionality in the last few years. And I'd say it's been a kind of underinvested um, from that side of things. So there's a whole bunch of different ways that we're able to do that. Um, and you know, without being specific about a particular way of being able to do that to, to improve it, I know that we've got uh, a team focusing on planning really significant improvements around that dimension. Findability, organization, um, surfacing uh, apps at the right time for the right customer through personalization and other mechanisms uh, is a huge opportunity there. Got it. Uh, Probably a quick one. Um, QuickBooks Desktop SDK. Is there a new SDK uh, in the pipeline coming out? How do you feel about that? Is something that's going to be kind of where, where the future of that is happening? Yeah, so to, to go at desktop generally, we, we absolutely see it as um, from a product side, just stepping away from Intuit developer for a moment, you know, QuickBooks desktop still has a very large number of customers. We consider it to be uh, critically important that we continue to serve that customer base who aren't ready to move over to the cloud and that it's going to be around a long time. Uh, we also know that we've had... Um, a thriving developer ecosystem around QuickBooks desktop. And so we want to continue to support uh, that. We, um, there was a relaunch of uh, the desktop marketplace about, uh, I think it was about a year ago or, or towards the end of last year on desktop.apps.com. Uh, so, you know, the findability and the ability to be, for customers to be able to find that is there for third party developers that are integrating with QuickBooks desktop to be able to publish and be found uh, on that front. Uh, the question around, is there going to be a brand new SDK? I actually don't know the answer to that. I don't, I don't know of uh, any plans for that, but David, uh, if you know, or maybe we could follow up with, with a team with a positive answer. Yeah. And maybe there's a, you know, a, maybe there's a, we could get a blog post out of like, Hey, here, here's, here's kind of the state of desktop, you know, where things are possibly being or a little bit of roadmap or something around that. That makes yeah. sense. Um, what are some of your favorite apps, Alex? Like not, not, not the apps in the platform, but yeah, not yeah, our yeah. developers apps, but other apps you use on a productivity basis. Like what makes you tick? Evernote. 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 Although I've got to find, I've got to say that the mobile Evernote, uh, has gone downhill. I'm just experiencing that. I wonder if anybody else is experiencing that. But like, definitely the the, uh, the desktop version is wow, awesome. Um, Dropbox, Slack, um, and then for my music, uh, Ableton. Um, Ableton Live is a brilliant product if you like creating music or anything. It's just unbelievable. It's a digital uh, audio workstation, and it blows my mind. Uh, how awesome that app is. I, I love spending time in there. Cool. Uh, one last question that came in from Jan Halgo, and then I'll let you, uh, after you answer that, uh, maybe give some closing thoughts and we'll wrap up. Uh, Jan Halgo, Rando, what is your favorite cocktail? Well, that's a very good question. Now now we're talking. <laughs> um, uh, my go-to is a dirty vodka martini. Um, slightly dirty, not too dirty, and a touch of vermouth. Um, and then my second favorite is a, a Vespa. I will go to a Vespa from time to time. Um, yes. Gosh, cool. uh, any it? other closing thoughts at all? Friday. Uh, no, it's not Friday afternoon yet. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> so any other closing thoughts you want to leave the community with before we uh, wrap up for this week? Yes. Um, I, I guess it's like, thank you very much for joining us today. I really appreciate you taking the time and I look forward to meeting you all in person uh, over time, whether it's at QBC in San Jose or the other events uh, or other opportunities that we've got. Um, just to tell you, I'm, I'm super, super excited to be back with the team and uh, the opportunity to just get back into this space is very, very exciting to me. And so I can just I'm looking forward to turn that passion uh, into um, success uh, for you as developers uh, on, our, on our platform and as part of our ecosystem. Awesome. Thank you very much, Alex. Everybody who's attended, thank you very much. Tomorrow we'll do uh, open office hours if you guys want to come in and ask. Really, it's whatever you need to ask me, questions, uh, your support tickets, whatever you need to do, you can come back next week. Um, until then, thank you so much, Alex, and uh, we'll see everybody next week. All right. Thank you very much, all. 